Janine, welcome to One Life Club. This is very exciting to me. I was just saying before that you have been massive inspiration specifically to myself as an individual. Now, this to me, this interview is very special because there's a massive purpose behind it. Yourself as a business individual, you have created successful businesses throughout your life, but also you have seen a lot of young and older individuals create their businesses and you have seen what works in business in general and what doesn't. So pleasure having you here. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, I'm going to start this conversation straight away to the point. What is the common mistake of every single business owner that they make on start of their business journey? Gee, there's, there's so many mistakes people make. They're hence why most businesses don't make five years. Um, look, God, there's many. I think the, the key one is getting the wrong people in your business. Yes. You know, that can make your business go pear-shaped. Uh, marrying the wrong man or woman or, yes. uh, you know, because sometimes you want to have this great vision. You were talking about how amazing your wife is yes. and as a team you're a powerhouse. Yes. You, know, you know yourself that if you get the wrong partner, and even partner, when I talk partner, it doesn't mean just you don't have to be married. It could be, you know, sibling, it could be anyone, but people around you. If you get the wrong partner, then um, it's pretty tough to actually do anything. Yes. Um, it's not impossible, but it's tougher. Yes. Uh, I think managing cash flow is the biggest thing that happens to people. Yes. They they forget about GST and they spend all their money and then suddenly bills come and they go, oh, whoops. Um, getting too excited about the pretty fun stuff and yes. then forget about the foundations. Because I always say in start of any business, um, if two of us want to start a business and, and you know, we might be really excited about the journey and specifically if it's our first business ever. So I think excitement, expectations, it's really high. And I think a lot of people don't manage their disappointments really well because start of any business, you start with such a high expectations and such a high motivation. And then you start first month, you don't get a single client. Okay, how do you manage that expectations and how do you not walk away too early? Yeah, it's a person who uh, wants to climb Everest. You know, they buy all the equipment, they get really excited, they buy, they um, they do a plan, they get to uh, base camp, go, oh, that was too hard, and they yes. turn around and go home, right? So it's the people who's got that grit and drive to force themselves to take that next step, to get up the next day and solve their next problem. And not everyone's got it. Not everyone's got the, not everyone's built for it. And that's not yes. a bad thing. You know, some people want different things. You know, I'm, you, me, we, we're passionate about business. Some people are passionate about music. Some people are passionate yes. about art, right? Just find your passion, you know, but don't, you don't have to get into business because it's not for everyone. And to be honest, there's no right and wrong. I always say, you know, to a lot of younger individuals keep asking me, Emil, you know, what is, you know, how do I get successful? And my answer is by being happy. To me, true success is finding whatever the hell it is by being happy. And I keep saying to people that a couple of months ago, I was in Melbourne. And as I was walking out of Crown Hotel, there was a doorman there. And he greets people. And as I'm walking, you know, and I looked on my right, the way he started talking to me, I wanted to be a doorman. He was full of happiness, full of energy, full of that guy shouldn't do anything in his life but that because he was truly happy. It was mm -hmm. amazing. And if he does what I do, or if he does what somebody else does, he will probably be really unhappy because, you know, I always say, you know, a lot of people are doing things for the money, um, which is the wrong thing. In my opinion, I think the right thing is to to find what, what you're passionate about and what makes you happy. And, um, and then everything else is a bonus to, mm. to that. Do you think that... Do you believe that either you got it or you don't have it to be extremely good at something? Or do you think we can learn the craft? You can work at it. You've got to get the right, I believe you have to have the right attitude to want to. Yes. Right? If you've got that, then you can do anything. Right? Yes. It's just, it's so you, so there's a amount of people that have got so much talent, like whether it's yes. sporting or art or yes. business or, or numbers, they're just oozing talent, right? Yes. Um, but just don't have that desire. Grunt. 
to yes. follow it or grunt or grit or whatever you want to call it, right? Yes. So, so the person who has the grunt and grit yes. will probably be more successful even though they're less talented, the people who are talented, because sometimes if they're talented, it's come too easy. And yes. so when they hit a wall, it's like, oh, it's a bit hard and they kind of give up. But yes. the person who probably, which is me, <laughs> I'm probably not good at anything really. Yes. Um, and, and so I've had to try really hard at everything. Um, so I just keep at it. I'm just keep, I'm just sort of keep, you know, pounding the pavement and put one step in front of the other. And, you know, the people with more talent and there's most people have more talent than me in most things, um, you know, they just don't keep going. I said the same thing. I might not be the most talented, but I promise you, I will outwork anyone. And that's the mentality that I have because some people have natural ability to be good at something. I mean, I can never be a soccer player. I have two left feet. So it doesn't matter how much I train and run, but I, I will keep trying. And obviously, harder you try, you know, um, more chances you have to actually succeed at anything. Now, talk of young generation today. Um, I'm 44. And when I started on tools, I started literally on construction sites. I, you know, we came to Australia as a refugee, my beautiful mom and dad and my brother. And, and I had to work and I still finished grade 12. But I feel like when I started on, on tools, I would work till five, six o'clock every day. Right now, I have multiple development sites. When I see somebody work past three o'clock, I literally want to give them a house. I get so excited. Do you think today's generation is, I won't say not as hard working like generation when I was 18 years old. Do you think um, uh, now people, the expectations and, and um, uh, are, are different completely to where it used to be? I think there's, we're, I, I think people are people, right? I think people Correct. in the 60s are still the people, the same same youth in the 60s and 70s and 80s, et cetera, are the same youth of today. They've got the same yes. desires. Some are highly motivated and really hungry. Other yes. people you know, just want to finish at 2, two o'clock and go for a surf. Yes. You have that everywhere. I think what's different is that um, everything is so much more fast-paced now. You know, yes. everything is so, everyone is so connected to that smartphone because all their information, all their life and their connections are here. Um, you know, they can get a job quicker, right? So they can, you know, if they have a bad day, seat pops up a job, I say, okay, I can move. So people feel like they've got more options. We're also in an environment where we have very, very low unemployment. Yes. So there's a number. Of, so if we yes. were in the same incident in the 60s with the same un, same employment, yes. we probably have the same attitude. So Correct. people do go, I mean, look, I've seen, oh, the Generation Y, they're lazy, Generation X, yes, yes. This, Generation Z. I mean, every single generation that comes through, people go, oh, my God, these are the worst generation, right? Correct. I, I don't buy into that. I reckon yes. there's some amazing people of all generations and there's yes. also some really lazy people in all generations. And, yes. you know, there's saints and sinners everywhere, right? I don't think it comes down to, you know, age. I do think that, you know, 16 to 20, they think a certain way, you know, 20 yes. to 30, they think a certain way, et cetera, right? So yes. there's people who go, right, I, I'm committed. I need to get a, you know, a house for my family. You know, yes. this is what I need to do. And others just go, yeah, it'll be fine. As my son said, when I said to him, he's drinking too much. He said, that's future Riley's problem, not mine. <laughs> so, but, so, which is uh, true. I went, yes, yes, but guess what, Riley, you're future Riley too, just so you know. Um, so, yeah, so I think I, I think we get caught up in labels, really. Yes. I do I do believe that um, uh, it is a great thing for any generation now, including me right this second, that we have access to information in a heartbeat because anything you want to learn, everything you want to find out is there. I remember when I was 16, 17, only way you can learn anything, you either watch TV, read a book, read a newspaper, you were really limited uh, or meet people. But right now, access to information is there, which means that is probably pushing us to, I won't say think faster, but, but live faster fast-paced life we, well we don't have to not know anything like if you said yeah what the hell janine's is like you can google it you know what's janine's foot size you can google it right yes <laughs> so, right you can find out what's the capital of find it out right so there's nothing yes. we don't so in actual fact the smart phone is really an extension of our brain right so we yes. can actually not not know anything right yes 
equally there's a double edged sword. I don't know if you saw the Hamish Hamish um uh, uh what is it called uh replica of yes, him yes, talking yes. and selling, right? So we're in a very dangerous world at the moment yeah. where we're cynical anyway, but you know, are you really talking to me? Am I really saying these things? Or am, am I really I, talking to Janine here? <laughs> or am I a deep fake? You know, so yes. we we've got to sort of put things in place in life to to make sure that we don't yes. get so cynical that we just don't trust anything either. So it's that sort of yes. I don't know, we're in a really interesting world. Uh, you know, AI is um it's coming to us at a speed of knots. You know, we thought really the last 15 years of technology has been mind blowing how quickly it's come. Well, next the next five years. The next year, the next six months, the next week. Um yes. it's it it is it is growing at a speed of knots. And I've always been anxious, not anxious, not an anxious person, but I've always yes. been very conscious yes. that I want to be on the forefront of technology at all time. I want yes. to know. I, so I never want to be behind, but it's very difficult at the moment because things are going so fast that by the time I've mastered chat, then there's bar. Yes. By the time I've got bar, <laughs> there's something else. And so I'm sort of going, right, okay. Yes. I'm, try I'm trying, guys. Can you slow down a bit so I can catch up? <laughs> which, which I do think that um, I always say that we are living in such amazing time to start any kind of business. But at the same time, we are also living in dangerous times because I've seen it over years, a lot of businesses that are not trying to keep ahead with times end up being behind, specifically in real estate. And I will never name anybody, but there's a lot of brands that have been around for a very, very long time. They are not moving ahead with time when it comes to marketing specifically. And, and right now we have access to everything and, um, and a lot of big brands end up being behind because they're not moving as fast or they're not adapting to changes that we are living in. So, you know, danger is it might be creating a business that's been around for 40 years. Doesn't mean it can last another five. If you're no, not really... you adapt or die. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, world has changed. You got to change with it. Your consumers are now acting differently. You might keep up, keep up or get off the horse. You know, it really is. Um, you know, it is something we need to really focus on. Yes. When I was starting my companies, there was no such a thing as, or not, I didn't know, I guess, at, at that time, I wasn't raising money. The way I started my businesses, I was working seven days a week on tools so I can buy a first block of land and build a first house and sell it. And I was working even harder to build two houses and three, it was progress. And it took me 25 years to be where I am today. Um, now, new generation, I won't say new generation, is generation have access to money or access to people to be able to raise money. So a lot of them are raising money for whatever idea they have. Could be tech startup or anything. It's not as easy as you think now. It really isn't. Well, I think... I, I, probably not as easy, but because access to information right now I can find people and I yeah, can but approach people are them. sitting watching this podcast, right, and going, mate, Correct. I'm finding it hard. How can, yes. you, how can you say it's easy to raise money? That's all I want to do is raise money. But yes. It's it's not as, I don't think it's as easy. It might, it might have been a period for startups that it wasn't yes. too hard. I yes. think it's. I think we're moving into a different era where it's now very difficult. I don't think but, it's as easy as it was. But if people are raising money or if they come to somebody like Janine, what are you looking in people if you want to invest money in different ideas? Oh, look, for me, it's always the person. As I said to you earlier, it's a person yes. that can go from base camp to Everest, to yes. the top of Everest, right? And not many people can. So I don't yes. care how good an idea it is, but if that person's not the right person or just doesn't get it, you know, there's sort of people that just yes. don't get it. They, they, or they don't surround themselves with good people or, you know, they try and be too many things to too, too many, yes. too many people for too many things. Like it's just, so I'm looking for the person, you know, I, yes. I, um, I'm not a big one to, to invest in startups. I want people to prove it. I yes. want to make sure that, um, and, you know, a bit like yourself and myself, you know, you have to sweat it. You have to, yes. you know, you have to do it, the bootstrapping. You've got to, you know, you've got to know your business before. Yes. I, yes. So if you're not prepared to risk everything, why would I, why would I risk my money? There's, so, a, there's a first thing that um, myself um, and, and my business partner, Simon, you know, we both do invest money into, into different people and, and companies. And um, and at the moment, you know, we get approached all the time by 
um, individuals saying, hey, mm -hmm. can you invest money in my idea? An idea is the smallest part of, of making something happen. I mean, we all oh have 2,000 ideas. But making it, idea. I can talk about it for the days, but making any idea a reality. And advice that I always give to young individuals, show me how deep are you in, you know? And um, it, even if it doesn't matter how much money you spend and how much time you spend, um, and then you can really see if you can actually make that hard of breaking through what I would call um, uh, making idea potentially possible, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so one thing, um, looking next 10 years, if you are a young individual, you are young, um, let me take that back. But if you're just starting and you want to be in a business, but you don't know what you're passionate about. And that is, I find it with a lot of young individuals, they want to be successful, but they still haven't found what they want to do. So they're trying to find businesses, potentially where there's money in it, instead of passion. If they are lost, how do they find themselves and find a purpose, how to get something? I think the key thing is you, you sit there and go, what do I, I don't know what I'm passionate about. Let it come to me, right? Yes. It will never come to you. I think yes. sometimes you, you don't know where the path leads. I think just yes. start doing something. I don't care what yes. it is, anything. Because yes. on that journey, you'll meet someone that's got a good idea or you'll meet someone who knows someone. Or yes. but, but it's this analysis paralysis. It's like this thing that the kids go, I need to have to know it now. Well, no, you don't. Go yes. on your journey. Maybe travel, get inspired, you know, yes. maybe work for someone that you think you're interested in and see if you're interested. If you're not, go somewhere else. Like, yes. but don't just sit there and go, where am I going to be passionate? Find where where am I where am I going to find my passion? Because sitting there and wanting it, all that will do is give you that, the want of it, the feeling of want. So yes. if that's you know, so I think it's um I think other thing is that people shouldn't be just sitting there going, I need my passion. Go out. Like don't wait yes. for people to help you, help yourself. Well, if you do wait, one thing that I always say, clock doesn't stop ticking. I mean, I Damn swear, man. I swear I was 20 yesterday and I was 33 hours ago and I'm 44 now. Time does go sparse. And um, and it's important that um I don't think many people do realize that we only have one life and it does go extremely fast. And to any young individual, I keep telling them this, please go and find somebody who's 90 years old and just ask them one question. And that is, how fast did life go? No single yeah, 90 years old is going to tell you, took me forever to get here. Every have, you, have, have you got kids? No. Right. Def okay. Do you remember what it was like when you were 21, 22? <laughs> do you really care about your super did you really care about your age did you care about the fact that no you know that injury is going to come back to you when you're 40 no nah. so for, a, for an older person to turn around to a young one like i said to my son drinking's bad for you it's not my problem it's <laughs> riley's problem in 20 years right that's what i thought that you're invincible that age so yes. I, I think i was trying to go to them hey guys you know you gotta do yes. this just the, the mind is is, is developed that way. You know, we, I yes. think we've got to remember we're actually animals, right? And yes. we're designed in a way, particularly in the early days, to be invincible so we could go and kill a lion so we can come and feed us, right? Yes, yes. So, you know, and then when you get older and wiser, yeah, you know, there's a better way to kill a lion. Yeah, so yes. I think, um, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, if I was telling my younger one to do anything, I'd just pat her on the back and say, go for it, honey. <laughs> you know, make all the mistakes because you need to make mistakes. You know, um, you know, yeah. You know, try try to be nice to people. You know, yes. it'll come back to bite you if it doesn't. And at the end of the day, everyone's on their journey, and they've got to make mistakes to do it. And I think, look, mistakes are part of the journey. Um, uh, it's like somebody asked me the other day, Mill, do you regret anything in your life?" My answer to them is, if I want to talk about regrets, I can regret two million things. I can talk about it for a year, for for century. But the way I see it, that I'm really loving the human that I am today. I'm really loving and I know where my purpose of life is because of who I am today. Everything that has happened to me, good, bad and ugly and mistakes, whatever you want to call it, is the part of the journey that I can reflect and say, um, I, I, I love the person that I can see in oh, front of my no, mirror. No, absolutely. Boost juice started little 
grown to massive business? Recipe for scaling up. Uh, recipe for scaling up. Um, plan. Make a plan. You know, plan, plan for what you want, where you want to be. And then, then come back to today. What do I have to do today to achieve that goal? Yes. So the the, the, the planning, there's the goal in the planning, right? Yes. So if you sort of just go, if you don't plan, then every day you just get up, you do your email, you fire fight, you fire yes. fight, you go to bed. You start up and you're a peak, right? Yes. So if you have a plan to go, right, I've got to build 100 stores. Well, guess what? I've got to do a lot of other things, just, plan, just doing. I've got to actually be really active. So yes. the thing is have a plan. Last question. What does never give up mean to Janine? I don't know. It's not like I never give up. I just don't think about giving up. You know, I, I truly believe that there's an answer to every question. And yes. I think if you stay at it long enough, you'll find the answer. So so it's not about giving up or not giving up. It's just about, like, in actual fact, you might say you might go, you might have given up on a business, right? Yes. Well, I don't see it's giving up. I just go, okay, I've I've invested, I've, I've exhausted every possibility. Yes. It's not going to work. So I'm not giving up. I'm actually going to pivot or I'm going yes. to take those learnings and take it somewhere else. The journey just doesn't stop. It's not like giving up, stop, that's it, it ends. It's like, Keep okay, that's what I learned. I come now going this way. All right, oh, I'm going this way. So it's just, you just got to, you know, go. But I think to your point earlier about success, success isn't the dollars in the bank. Success isn't um, success isn't more stores. Success is, you know, you say happiness. I I, I say the same thing, but in um is, you know, having my family around me and wanting mm. to be around me. That's when I feel successful. Not when I open a new store. It's um it's the fact that my kids want to hang out with me. Well I look I look forward forward to hanging out with you in the future as well. Thank you for your time. Very great. No worries at all. See you Thank later. Thank you, Janine. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.